Today we're going to use InDesign to set up a digital portfolio. We'll start by going to File menu, choosing New and Document. Once the new document panel opens up, um, we are going to set this for uh, intent print is fine. Uh, number of pages. Let's start with 15. If you know you're going to need 20 pages, obviously you could put 20 in there. We're going to make sure that facing pages is checked and set the orientation of the page rather than portrait. Set it to landscape. Makes it nice and wide. Once everything is set, I've got preview selected so I can see what my pages will look like. I can see in my page panel what all my pages will look like together in my document. If I'm satisfied, I can click OK. Now, one other thing I want to do is, by default, InDesign sets everything up in a unit of measurement called pipas. I don't want things in pipas. So I'm going to go to my Preferences menu, go to Units and Increments, and change the horizontal units to inches and vertical units to inches, and click OK. OK, now I've got things set up in inches. Um, I'm going to go to my master pages by double clicking on them. There are some things that I want to set up that are going to repeat on every page. I have a header that's going to repeat on every page and page numbering that is going to repeat obviously sequentially on every page. Plus I want to put in some guides for text and placeholders for images. These are all things that are going to get set up in master pages. Uh, you can tell if you're in master pages. If you double click in the master page and you're, you see a little grayed out page up here, that's how you know you're in that page. If I wanted to go to page one, if I double clicked on it, page one is grayed out over here in the pages panel and I am in page one. I don't want to set up any master items in page one. I want to set them up on the master. So I'm going to double click again on a master and use my keyboard command minus to zoom out so I can see the entire spread in my window. I know that I'm going to set up some text in here. I'm going to rename layer one and call it background graphics. And in my background graphics, I could really set up any repeating graphic. Any, and when I say repeating graphic, I mean anything that repeats on every single page. That is where I would set that up. It's helpful to have different layers so that I know where things is. So I'm going to set up the color. I'm just going to put black bar into my document. I'm using guides, and I may change the size of this. I'm just setting this up at one and a quarter inches, and I'm looking at the ruler on the left hand side of my open window to make sure that I set this up correctly. I can also look, if I look to the right of where my cursor is, there is a little gray box that pops up that's just letting me know that the width of this rectangle that I'm creating that's hopefully going to be filled with black is 22 inches wide and uh, one and a quarter inches high. Okay, once that is into in place, it doesn't look black, does it? Let's double check. Now it is black. Okay, once that's in place, I'm just going to lock that panel because I don't want to accidentally knock that out of place. I'm going to make a new layer and call it text. In my text layer, I'm going to create the text that is going to appear on the header in every single page. This is why I use master pages. If I had to like reinvent the wheel and re 
type this on every single page, that would be a tremendous waste of time. So I'm going to draw myself a text box here, generously sized. I'm going to change the text color from black to white so that it's visible on the black background. I'm going to type my name. And yes, I know, I just made an error. I'll go back and fix that. I'm going to type the name of the class. And the date of the semester. Okay, once I have that in there, the default font in InDesign is Minion Pro. Uh, that looks yucky to me, so I'm going to change it to Helvetica. I'm going to set the font weight to bold, and I'm going to knock up the point size to 18 point. Once I do that, I'm going to Option, click and drag this whole box. Option clicking and drag will make a duplicate of it. I'm going to use my smart guides, those green lines that you see, to align this and once I put that into position, bumped up against this little um, page guide here, I'm going to select everything, go up to the text alignment panel and just align that to the right. That way it looks visually balanced if I do that. If I just leave it flush left and bump it over to this side, it's going to look kind of yucky. So now that those things are in place, I can set, again, I'm still in master pages. I'm working up here in my A master spread. I've got my header set up. Uh, if I wanted to add anything into here, if I had like a logo or something that I wanted to stick that I thought wasn't going to compete with whatever I put into the pages, um, something subtle, I could put that in in this corner. For now, what we are going to do is we are going to set up page numbering. So I'm going to grab my text tool again. Just going to grab, draw a little box down here, make sure the text color is set to black. Uh, again, I'm going to change the font to Helvetica. I'm going to leave the font weight to regular. Uh, 12 point is fine. I can always go back in and change that later. And I'm just going to type something with two digits. It doesn't matter which ones I do because it's just going to be a placeholder. I'll drag it into position once I get everything set up. So once I've got this in here, I've got to make this into, there, there's a special tool in InDesign that will create sequential page numbers on each page. And again, as long as I set it up in a master over here in the pages panel. So with the text selected, if I go to type menu and go down to insert special character, markers, and current page number, it will change this to a page marker. And I know, I know what you're thinking. Oh my God, it just changed it to an A. It's supposed to be a number. A is basically a placeholder for every sequentially numbered page. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm just going to pull this down using my arrow keys so that the bottom baseline of the letter lines up with the little page guide here. I'm going to use option click and drag to put this over on the right hand side page. Once I do that again, I want to make sure that I've used a line right. I'm going to double click in here, select the text, go up here to my text alignment panel, click align right, and then we've got a page number that's going to align with that lovely page guide over there. If I want to test this and see if it worked, all I have to do is click on page one. And there's a one down there, that, so I know that this has worked. If I want to check and make sure that all my pages are numbered sequentially, 
I can start by going into page two and you see there's a little two down there and there should be, hey, there's a three on the other side. Okay, so we've got the page numbering set. So um, I could always, eh, we can continue working in text. Okay, so now I'm gonna put in using the rulers, I'm just gonna put in some guides and I'm going to set them. I just want to make sure that everything I put in here lines up. So I'm going to set the guide at, and if it's not behaving, as long as I have a guide selected, if I use my arrow, up arrow key, down arrow key, I want it set, I want the guide at one and three quarter inches. So once I get one put in on one side, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to pull down another guide and I don't want anything I put into these pages crashing against my page number that I just stuck in there. I don't want any crashing type or any crashing images. I don't want to obliterate the page numbers. So I'm just going to put in a guide here to help me and I'm going to put it at seven and seven eighths and do the same thing on the other side, seven and seven eighths. That way it's nowhere near my page numbers. I have more than enough room to work in. Okay, now I need to set up some guides for uh, placeholders for images and where I'm going to put my text. So first I will go over to my toolbar and there's this lovely, the toolpicks isn't showing up today, uh, there's this lovely little placeholder tool. If I select that, it's like a, a regular rectangle, but it has a little X through it. So if I select that and click and drag, that's going to be the area. Notice I'm using the, the smart guides, those little green arrows you see. I'm using the smart guides just in the name of consistency. and the guides that I just put in there. So now I've got a placeholder for images and I'm going to use my text tool to create right alongside it a placeholder for text. So I'm going to start with my cursor at the top of that guide that I just made and I'm just going to click and drag down using my page guide as a guide on the right hand side and I'm just going to create this box so that it touches the guides on the bottom, the guide that I created towards the top. And once I've got that in place, I'm going to go to type menu, fill with placeholder text, and then I've magically got what's called greeking in there so I can see where the text would appear on every page. And you know something? I just realized I stuck this into page two. To remedy that situation, what I would have to do is cut go back into my left master and paste because I don't want that stuff. I want it to appear on every single page, not on page two. And again, I'm going to have to drag guides into here because I put them on page two. But if you look now, once I've got it into the master page, if you look at the left hand side pages of each spread as you go down, uh, 2 through 14, you can see that that stuff that we stuck on the master page is in there. So let me just drag some guides so that I'm making sure I'm sticking this into the right place. Okay, 1 and 3 quarter inches, 1 and 3 quarter inches on that side. seven and seven eighths 
and seven and seven eighths. So now with these selected, I can bump them down into place. Okay, and once I've got there again, you know, hey, that, that's what happens, not paying attention, uh, put something in the wrong place. I want a repeat of these things over on the other side, on the other page, on that right hand page, but I want the image box placeholder to appear on the right side and this stuff to appear uh, over here on the inside, like closer to the page seam. So, option click and drag. Oop, not both. One at a time. Option click and drag. Use the smart guides to help you. Option click and drag. And drag that into position. So once I've got those set up, you notice that they appear on every page. Uh, occasionally I will set up another master in case I have something so huge that I think it's going to break format or take up an entire page. Sometimes I will delete things as I go on a page to change them, but what I really want to set up now, um, let's actually double click in both of these and select all and change this from Minion to Erotica. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side because Minion is yucky and Erotica is okay. There are other things that I'm going to set up that'll help me design the page and you can view those in the next video when I talk about using styles.